Hi guys, today's video I will be comparing my two cameras. This is my newer camera. It's a Sony A6400. It's about three years old and it's a, it's an awesome camera and I, I love it. It's, it's, it's becoming my main go-to. I'm still learning how to use it, but it can shoot 4K and it has really good uh, ISO compared to my last camera. Even though this camera technically seems better, I got a hack for this old camera. So this old camera is my Rebel T4i. I use it for almost all my videos up until, I don't know, the last two videos on my channel because I've been learning that camera and so that's what I've been using. My last video I posted was actually of just like video clips that I got from here that was just test footage of me trying to figure out how to use the new hack that I put into this. Essentially what I did is there's a software called Magic Lantern that was made like 10 or so years ago by a bunch of different photographers and videographers for Canon cameras especially like beginner cameras, because beginner cameras are great cameras, but Canon purposely set limitations for them to work for beginners to use, and even entry-level cameras and stuff. And those limitations are fine, like they make sense. But what the hack does is it, it overrides the system and exploits settings and options inside the camera that were there before that Canon didn't allow to be used by the camera or the software puts into the camera to use, which allows me to do a whole lot more now when it comes to photo and video. I have a whole lot more. Like I can do time lapses now. I couldn't do that before in camera. I'd have to do that in edit. And that was just annoying to do. So I didn't do that many time lapses with this camera because of that. I can also record video without a limit now. Whereas before, for whatever reason, there was this bug or something that if I wasn't like holding my camera and slightly shaking it, it would just stop videoing after 30 seconds. Now it's super annoying. I don't know why it did that, but it just did it. Now it doesn't because I have that hack. The coolest thing about the hack though is I can now shoot in raw video. And I don't mean raw video as in like unedited footage because that's I can do that with either camera. I mean raw video as in all caps raw, which raw is image files that like this these kind of cameras shoot that your phone can't use probably. Not many phones can shoot or really use RAW. What RAW images are is images that have a whole lot of information in them off of the images that are taken. And so you can do a whole lot more in editing and stuff. I mean, my explanation is probably not that great, but it's essentially just a larger image size that has more information that you can edit with and you can go more crazy with if you just use like jpeg you can still edit some but it's compressed and it's smaller and you're losing out on some information that you have with raw so not that jpeg or raw is worse there's some great um jpeg is still great especially in your cameras and stuff jpeg still holds up really well against raw it's just raw has a bit more information so you can generally it's seen as you can do more it's the more professional image file to use but jpeg still works great but that's just considering photos now video usually nowadays like digital video is compressed so you have smaller images like jpegs or smaller and video essentially in case you don't know is just a collection of a tons of images so each like image is a jpeg photo basically 
Now, because of the hack, I can shoot in that camera raw footage, which means each image is a raw photo. And that's it, like a raw photo is like 24 megabytes, whereas a JPEG might be like six to 12, I, I don't know. It's sometimes even smaller. If it's a PNG, maybe even smaller, I have no idea. But it's way smaller, has less information, is more compressed with usually the video that you shoot with. Now raw video, you have those raw files. And so you have a whole lot more information to work with. So in post, that means you can do a whole lot more when you're fixing your image, which is really handy. So for the short cinematic sequence that I shot for both of these cameras, it's just a quick shaving scene, but I really tried to push my limits like color grading wise and even composition wise. I, I definitely wanted it to look like it could be from a movie. And so I went all out and I'm pretty proud with what I got for both cameras. And uh, the song might have audio clicks and pops. I couldn't fix that. I tried so hard. And I'm curious if you can guess which video is which. And let me know which video you think looks better. I mean, I put a lot of effort into the color grade and used a the same LUT with both and I did a lot of yeah I did a lot of work post work wise to try and make them both to look good I'm just curious what you think looks better so enjoy tell which was the Sony and which was the Canon. I liked the Canon RAW a bit more. It To me it seemed a bit more filmic, like 2000s film like, maybe even 90s, where it just it just had a little bit more color depth or yeah depth to it and just it looked a little bit more vintage almost that the colors just looked more pleasing. That's not saying that the Sony's wasn't, but I liked the Canon RAW a lot more. And the because of the hack, I can now shoot 14-bit technically color, whereas my Sony 
has 8 bit. Now that's that's technical stuff um, that if you don't care about then don't worry. Essentially our eyes can shoot 20 bit color if they were cameras. I mean it's basically our live cameras all the time. But yeah, our eyes can see like 20 bit codes. 20 bit. Now bit, each bit is just like a uh, like a spectrum for grading how much color is seen at each level so 8-bit can see I think like 64 different or no sorry not 64 64 million or something like that. I could be wrong but it's somewhere it's a lot of color variety that it can see for different colors and color shades now 14-bit is larger so it has a larger variety 20-bit much larger and I don't know if we have any cameras that can even get that close. Now it shoots 14, but it can only really edit in 12, which is, I'm okay with that because that's more than what I got with it before. Before it was also 8-bit, but due to camera settings, it was even more restricted than my Sony. So, yeah. Anyways, the first sequence was on shot in the Sony second one was shot in the Canon. The Canon clip was shorter because for some odd reason I thought I filmed one shot that was longer than one of the shading shots and either I didn't or it didn't get transferred or something. I don't know. But it was shorter because I was missing that one shot that I got with the Sony and didn't get with the Canon. But I was really sure that I filmed it. So anyway. I hope you all enjoyed, and uh, feel free to comment down below which video you think is better. I personally really like them both. I mean, I spent a lot of time grading them, and my preference still is the Canon RAW, but I th I'm fine with going with either, and really my Sony is still going to be my go-to camera, because it just has a lot more capability with it. It goes up to 4K, the Canon does not. Uh, video side maybe the canon has better color science but it's limited to 1080p and then i have to shoot in like a crop factor in order for it to actually shoot raw video and yeah there's just a lot of restrictions with it it's really fun to use and it's just more of a hobby thing for me to run whereas if i for any professional stuff or want to be professional stuff the sony is now be, be be my go-to if I'm asked for a photo or video Cause, just because I have a lot more capability with what it can do but yeah I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one